Hello again guys, you're watching Nino's product reviews. My name is Nino and today we're going to take a look at the OnePlus 2. So the OnePlus 2 is one uh, of those phones that are really hard to get, but we'll talk about that later. In any case, I got one here. Let's unbox it first and see what's inside the package. So at uh, first, we're going to be greeted by the actual handset itself. And as you can see, it's very sleek. We're going to take a look at a more, um, we're going to take a more deeper look into the device a bit later. Let's see what else is in here. We have some kind of package and uh, quick start guide and something behind it probably warranty card maybe or what is this user guide okay so these are basically manuals on how to use the phone something that you really won't be needing if you take a look at this video and if there are any other questions i'm sure there are more than enough videos on youtube for you to learn how to use this device then we have the ominous USB Type-C cable. Now the Type-C cable is the newest uh, alteration of the cable and like the lightning cable for an iPhone you can use you can plug it on both ends. As you can see also the USB part on the other end is uh, connectable from both sides. It doesn't matter from which side you plug it in. So that's very cool and very innovative from uh, OnePlus. I like these guys for doing that. They're, they're being very bold. It looks like there's nothing more inside. Uh, but actually, you know, considering the price of the phone, I think that that's more than enough. So we have a charger, a cable, a user's manual, and the actual phone inside the package of the OnePlus 2. Alright, so now that we've taken the phone out of its package, let's take a look at it. And as you can see, it's very beautiful. They really did try to make it as nice as possible and achieved it. We have a sandstone cover and it's very grippy and like the OnePlus One, this one's even grippier. So it's it feels rougher but feels very comfortable at the same time. We have the speakers on the bottom, you can see the metal uh, encasing on the side, you know, these bezels are really excellent. And this uh, very interesting button here, actually a, a sliding switch which we'll talk about later. The headphone jack is on the top and uh, the camera on the back does not protrude out of the casing of the phone which is something I really like. And again the sandstone back uh, is something, it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a mixed bag. It depends on whether you like it or not, you're gonna have to choose that for yourself. Now if you take a look at the front of the phone, you'll see it has a somewhat physical button, but it actually is not really a button in its classical sense, it's more like a touch sensor and your biometric fingerprint scanner. So it looks like you could press it, but all you have to do is touch it, pressing will get you nowhere. So uh, that's something I don't like as much, I prefer real buttons, but this is okay too, you get used to it very quickly. So I've taken the liberty of uh, pulling out uh, Note 4 for comparison here and as you can see the Note 4 is a slightly bigger phone with a slightly bigger display but uh, the dimensions seem fairly similar if you look at both phones. Uh, the OnePlus One also very well built uh, and also has a removable back like the Note 4 but if I slap them on together you will still see that the Note 4 is protruding from both ends you know from above it and sideways so it is a slightly wider and taller phone but it gives you a feeling of how big this phone actually is. Once you remove the back cover you will be disappointed to find out that the phone does not support any kind of SD cards and removable battery. Now this is something we already knew because the specs are out. The only thing you can really access here are the double SIM cards with this small tree, which is a great thing because this is something I've been wishing for a long time. I just wish that there was a way for them to also let us access the battery and thus exchange it and also access uh, you know have a SD card slot that would have been awesome as we take a look at the phone side We'll notice that the power button and the volume rock are on the same side This can be actually quite comfortable if you get used to it But at first it might feel a bit alien the reason for that decision though is not just the comfort of the user But rather because there's a new feature added to this phone on the other side you see this is a special slider which can change between profiles I will show you what it does. Hold on, let me just turn it on and unlock the phone. So as soon as you slide it, it has two clicks to slide once and you have only priority interruptions and once more, only alarm. So this is going to be very quiet. And then if you go all down, all notifications. The mobile phone can recognize several gestures. You can use gestures to change songs while you're listening to them. You can use one to turn it on and you can use V which will activate your flashlight as seen here. You draw a V again, it will disable the flashlight and you can also draw a circle which in turn is going to immediately start your camera. These are very useful and very fast so it's very good to have them. It's something that we're seeing more and more often in modern phones and I personally am a huge fan of it. 
the biometric scanner on the phone's software button, that's how I'm gonna call it from now on, is actually working very well. It's one of those better scanners which only require you to slide your finger down. You just put it on and as you can see the recognition is very, very good. The phone offers a ton of customization and one of the options is the so-called function shelf. Now this is a swipe from uh, left to right which will open your shelf. The OnePlus 2 comes with Oxygen OS which is basically a near stock Android experience. I find that great, no bloatware here and you can customize it and personalize it quite a bit. As you can see you can swap the effect of the buttons, you can activate the backlight, you can do a lot of modifications what the long press of a button will do. For example here I've set it up to turn off my screen and if I hold my, my finger on the button which equals a long press it turns off, I double tap it it turns on. So as you can see you can do a a lot of this stuff discounts for all of the buttons it's a great feature and I love it and the customizations don't even end here so obviously the phone allows for further customizations you can activate a phone wide dark mode which is going to make the whole phone kind of darker which is very cool you can also send the accent colors you can change the LED notifications a lot of personalization going on here guys and just because you can, why not also modify the positions of the icons on the drop down menu. So as you can see OnePlus were really trying to give you a lot of power and freedom to modify this phone and make it feel and work exactly the way you want, which I appreciate greatly. And since this is ultimately a flagship phone, the main rule applies here, flagships will be benchmarked. And that's exactly what I'm doing with Antutu. I'm going to obviously fast forward this, but the result of the phone is very, very good. Here I had other applications in the background which I had forgotten. So I'm going to show you what the result was afterwards as well when all those were closed. But as you can see, the Snapdragon 810 is a powerhouse and it does not take no for an answer. It's really great and we're gonna have to take another look at uh, the phone when we have games running because while it is powerful and obviously Antutu is confirming that for us, I still want to see how it's going to perform uh, when it comes to games. I want to see how the display looks with all these colors. Generally I already have a pretty good feeling. Next up, it's time to try the games. Now obviously this is a powerhouse of a phone and it's no surprise that all the games run wonderfully. What we're really going for here is seeing does the 1080 display look good while we're playing games because this is one of those times when the display is really important. How's the sound? And of course, does the game stutter for any reason? And does the phone get hot? Now why am I mentioning that last one? Because there were a lot of people saying the 810 uh, Snapdragon will overheat quite a bit. That is actually not true, I didn't feel any specific overheating, it got slightly warm when I was playing longer time, but that is normal with absolutely every phone. By no uh, extent of the imagination was it very hot. Now if we look at for example Asphalt here, you're going to notice that the game looks gorgeous, runs perfectly well, there's really nothing you can complain about, some people were actually unhappy that it wasn't coming with a Quad HD display, personally I think that Quad HD displays or mobile phones are overkill, they just eat up your battery and it's just too much of a sacrifice. The sound on this phone is loud enough, thankfully the speaker is positioned on the bottom, unlike things like the aforementioned Note uh, 4 where the speaker is in the back and uh, other than that the games run really smoothly, the, it looks gorgeous, there is really nothing you can complain about when it comes to power and, uh, and graphic uh, reproduction of this phone, it's just a beautiful phone with a lot, a lot of muscles that it's not afraid to show you and it also looks good doing it. So yeah, when it comes to that, this phone is absolutely the bomb. So let's talk camera. On the back we have a 13 megapixel camera, optical image stabilization, laser autofocus, dual LED flash, really great camera actually and on the front we have 5 megapixels at uh, 1080p again. So both cameras are very good as you can see the back camera can provide a great HDI picture, it can provide very nice colors although the HDR appears to be a little oversaturated but still something that I like personally, it's of course a matter of taste. Here you can see a few other pictures that I've taken with it and they all look very nice. You have to consider that this was a very low, low light day and thus that has influenced the picture quality and it still looks great. It has a nice function which is slow motion video as you can see here and that works quite well. I was very satisfied with it. 
all in all, I would say that the camera is one of the best cameras out there on flagship devices and they definitely haven't been saving any money when it came to that. I would love to see other phones with cameras this good. Most of the time the cameras that I end up tasting are somewhat disappointing except if we go for other flagship devices of course. So at the end of the day whether this is the right phone for you or not is something you have to decide for yourself. Ultimately this is kind of the, the phone that is right almost for everyone because it offers a lot of power, it has a very nice big display, it is snappy, games work and the sound is okay for me you know everything really fits in this phone the camera is great now the things that i don't like uh one of the things i don't like is the shelf but you can just disable it's one of them it's a, it's a fairly stupid feature i would have preferred a tactile button i just like them i like pressing them actually rather than this but uh, other than that i think the phone is great i enjoy using it and uh, i'm going to keep it definitely but one of the worst things about this phone is the fact that it is super hard to get. Currently we have 6 million people waiting on the invites list and without an invite, no phone my friends. But if you do get an invite, 420 euro are gonna get you, included the delivery, are gonna get you this nice phone with 4 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of space in it. At the end of the month I'm probably gonna get a few invites so if you guys subscribe now I'm going to give away some of these invites to my subscribers so be sure to do that. Have a great day. And thanks for watching.